Alaska. Hi, welcome to the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center. Thank you for joining us virtually. Here at AWCC, we are a not-for-profit wildlife sanctuary dedicated to preserving Alaska's wildlife through conservation, education, research, and quality animal care. My name is Natalie. I am the naturalist education specialist here at AWCC. And today, we're gonna to be giving you all kinds of great information about our Sitka deer. We are located here in Portage, Alaska, so we've got a ton of snow with us. Please let us know where you are joining in from, and we'd love to hear how the weather is where you are as well. Since we've got all this snow, we're building a snowman today for our Sitka deer. This is a great way to do enrichment for them, which kind of gives them a job and helps them move their brain around a little bit more. So our gorgeous snowman here is going to be adorned with different veggies as well as some sticks and we're gonna let our Sitka deer willingly participate in eating them. We would also love for you to ask us any questions you may have about our Sitka black-tailed deer, and we'll get started with building our snowman. Who is that building the snowman? This is Ashley, she Hi. is one of our keepers. You can also ask Ashley questions. Hi everyone, welcome to our little black-tailed Sitka deer snowman. So here we have a lettuce scarf that's not staying on very well, but we're doing our best. We got blueberry eyes, nose, and some buttons. And then we will be giving some brows, some branches as the arms. You want to have the honor? I will try. <laughs> oh, I know. He lost little, his eyeball. It's a little tricky. That was a nose actually. Oh. Maybe it can be another button. Perfect. Such long arms. What's the temperature? Our temperature today is around 25 degrees this morning and it's gotten up to about 30 degrees or so. So it's really not too cold today. Um, but we did get close to 27 or 30 inches of snow over the past couple of days. So we have a lot of the white stuff all over the ground. The animals have a love-hate relationship with it though. All right, our snowman is all ready, and I'm sure you've already seen one of our Sitka. This is Cat. This is Cat. She is one of the Sitka that live here at AWCC. We have a total of six Sitka black-tailed deer. These deer all live with us because they were injured or orphaned in the wild and needed to be rescued, and so they will live here for the rest of their lives. Are you more interested in the boot? Oh, I leave that right there. And she's currently licking the salt off of the boots of our social media manager, Morgan. Salt is a very important component of the diet of many animals, including deer. Um, that is a mineral that is really hard for them to find in a lot of their food, so they look for other sources of that salt. And oftentimes our boots or the roadway where we salt the roads is a great way to find them. Sitka black-tailed deer are native to Alaska. They only live here in southern Alaska in the rainforest. So where we are in Portage, Alaska is the tip of the Pacific rainforest. Um, so these animals really only live in the rainforest, so they're quite small because of that. Um, Sitka black-tailed deer only get up to about 120 pounds. They're the second smallest deer species in the United States. The only ones smaller than them are Keys deer, located in Key West, Florida. She's very enriched by the salty boots. <laughs> well, she was thinking about it. <laughs> Blueberries aren't your thing. That's okay. <laughs> I assure you this is a very tickly, my friends. <laughs> what if we move on over to our snowman? See. So our snowman's lost some of his scarf. It's now become hair. <laughs> oh. What do we think? Who is Ashley's favorite deer? You can't ask that of a zookeeper. They're all our favorites in their own way. Right, and then oh. we've got another friend joining us. This is also one of our female deer. And she's into the lettuce of our snowman scarf. Oh. So here at AWCC, we have three females and three 
male Sitka black-tailed deer. So the ones right here with us, these are all of our females. Mm -hmm. Our males have already lost all of their antlers, so it can be a little bit harder to see them um, and tell them apart from the females when they're far away. And speaking of losing antlers, that is one really cool thing about members of the deer family, which also includes moose and elk. Members of the deer family grow antlers and antlers fall off every single year. They get loose kind of like our teeth do and they usually just pop off either from the sheer weight or they'll like wiggle their head and they'll pop off on the ground and people collect them. Here at AWCC we like to collect them. We had a very special moment. Ty is one of our more skittish female deers and she just came over to investigate. I don't think she'll be joining us for our enrichment moment but that was very cool for her to come over with three people in here and this is rain <laughs> no thank you rain here is a bottle baby so she tends to be one of our more friendly deers because she's been with people for a really long time you want to get a close-up of the lettuce oh. Sure is. We left it. Literally just a piece. Nope. So while we're giving them romaine lettuce, this is kind of a special treat for them. A deer in the wild eats what we call browse. So they're not grazers, they're browsers, which means they like to eat things that are like at their head level. So they eat leafy things off of branches or in the winter woody branches. And then in the summertime, they're going to eat um, things like blueberries and creeping hemlock. Here at AWCC, we give them special treats like blueberries and romaine lettuce, though. Now my boots. I get a turn. We just decapitated our snowman there. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> she sure did. <laughs> So I was just talking about things that they eat. One really cool thing about deer, like Sitka black-tailed deer, is they have a four-chambered stomach. They're considered a ruminant animal. And one of those stomachs is called a rumen. The rumen is comprised of a bunch of microbacteria and that microbacteria digest all of the grasses and different leafy greens that they eat with a byproduct that is kind of like a fatty acid. It's got a more specific name than that. Um, and then they absorb that as nutrients. So they're able to completely utilize all of the vegetation that they eat with um, a side of a little bit of stuff. So their poop kind of comes out like sawdust. Some training we do with a lot of our individuals here is desensitization training. So. As you can see, we love when our deer give us voluntary behaviors, but also for medical issues, it helps if we can voluntarily get them to do pokes and to give them injections with being as minimal stress as possible. So something we would do here is a touch behavior or a poke just to desensitize them. It's very light. They don't mind it. But for when that poke comes that has the medicine, that it is as smooth and stress free as possible. <laughs> You've got a little bit of snow on your nose. Mm. Ashley, what kind of branches did we bring in for them today? Oh, I believe this is willow. And I'm not sure, do you know what this one is? For a lot of our hoofstock species, we are collecting willow and alder in the winter in Alaska especially. It could be challenging even to find the browse since it's covered in such deep snow here. So we welcome all donations of browse, which have been really great. Our moose love it, our caribou, our reindeer, our sitka. Um, it's in great enrichment, but also in a really important part of their diet. So thank you to everyone who has donated that and our sitka definitely appreciate it. Is it really cold here today? I think we feel like it's warm here today. I think it depends on where you're from, what you think of the weather. Um, but it's in about the high 20s right now, 
which for us is fairly warm. There's also not a wind. So because of where we're located in Portage, we usually get really high winds and today it's pretty still. We're located on the inlet of the ocean as well as surrounded by tall mountains that have glaciers inside of them. So the wind will come off the ocean and then it swirls around in those mountains and then it makes a really windy time here. We're also in the rainforest so we do get a lot of snow. We've had a ton the past couple of days. If you are one of our followers on social media, you've probably seen that we've been closed several days this week because of the high snow amounts. There's, I don't have anything in there. And Evelyn has just commented on hearing our volunteer eagle. <laughs> we do have a couple of different eagles who come and visit us here on property and it's really fun to hear those um, wild eagles talking with one of our eagles that live here on property, Adonis, who he lives here because he doesn't have one of his wings that has been amputated, so they like to chat with each other. We also have a lot of ravens who you might sometimes see on property because they like to come and scavenge food from our animals that we provide food to. They're really into the beans. I know, they have salt blocks. <laughs> you have licking opportunity, but... This is the, more fun. Exactly. <laughs> it's very novel. How do Sitka keep themselves warm in the winter? Yeah, Ashley just asked me how do Sitka keep themselves warm in the winter. So they have two kinds of coats covering them. They have a really fluffy down coat. If you look at these girls, you can see that they've kind of got a lot of fur on them. So up underneath here, they've got a really fluffy down coat that helps keep them really nice and warm, just like our own coats. And then this hair right here is called a guard hair. That guard hair is hollow and that hollow guard hair fills with air and their bodies then warm up the hollow air and it creates a really, really nice warm layer on them. It also helps them kind of stay afloat if they go swimming. Sitka deer are really good swimmers. So if they go swimming in the ocean, it kind of helps them stay afloat. How old are these deer? It's a great question. So we have various ages of our deer here. Rain is our youngest deer arriving in 2021 as a baby. Um, and then we have our oldest deer here is Solstice. He's a male and he'll turn 10 this spring. Do you remember Solstice's birthday? I don't know his exact birthday, but I do know he turns 10 this spring. So he was born in 2014, but I don't know exactly what day he was born. I believe he was born on the summer solstice. On the summer solstice? <laughs> Perfect. Makes sense why that's his name. <laughs> And how do these deer look when they're young versus how they look now? That's a great question. So a baby Sitka black tailed deer is going to be born at about six pounds and they're going to be covered in little white spots. They're also reddish in the summer months and they turn into this more gray color in the winter months. So a baby Sitka is kind of a red color with white spots. And this is so that their mothers can hide them away while their mothers go out looking for food. Looking for food is a very dangerous activity for all animals, but especially prey animals like a deer. So they leave their babies alone for hours at a time while they go out looking for food and then come back to them and nurse them. There's two reasons that this is a fact of one, a Sitka black-tailed deer is born with zero scent. They smell like absolutely nothing when they're newborn. They also have little white spots on them that look like um, spots coming through the canopy. So it's a great camouflage on them. And so because of this, it makes it a lot harder for predators to find them if they're sitting in a bush versus if they were walking around with their mom grazing, which they don't eat grass when they're first born, they just drink milk. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense for them to expend that energy to walk around anyways. And will we breed these deer? We are currently not breeding any of our animals at AWCC besides our wood bison. Our wood bison are part of a conservation project where we breed them here on property and then in coordination with the Alaska Department of Fish and Game, we then re-release them into Alaska's wild portions that is part of their native range. So the Sitka here um, that we are looking at, these ladies will just be here um, to serve as ambassador animals for their wild counterparts. And how long is their life expectancy? So a Sitka black-tailed deer typically lives to about 10 years, but some have been noted living up to about 15 years. There's some teeth in there now too. <laughs> I hear them. <laughs> All of the fun smells. I can't have the gloves in my pocket. 
she'll try. I know she will. Hi. Can I so I mentioned what a baby Sitka deer looks like. I do want to use this as an opportunity to remind you that if you find an animal that you think may be orphaned, don't pick it up and take it home with you. Instead, call your local authorities. Baby deer are an animal that are commonly accidentally taken from their mothers because they do leave them for a long period of time. So if you see a baby deer that is in your flower beds, it's probably not orphaned. It's good to keep an eye on it. And if it's there for longer than 24 hours, then you should call your local authorities, but never interact with an animal that you think may be orphaned. It's proper to call the authorities near you. Every state has a different one here in Alaska. We have the Alaska Department of Fish and Game that we would contact. We had a question about the wood bison. Is there a difference between the wood bison and bison that you would find in the lower 48? There is. So the bison you find in the lower 48 are called plains bison. Plains bison are smaller than wood bison. Wood bison are 200 pounds larger with an average male getting up to about 2,200 pounds, making them the largest land mammal in North America. Um, and they are native to both Alaska and portions of Canada, while plains bison are native to the lower 48. Uh, plains bison also going to have a smaller shoulder hump while a wood bison has a larger shoulder hump. They do have different scientific names as well, so they are genetically distinct species. All right, I think our ladies are getting a little bit tired of our snowman, so we're gonna let them go today. Um, thank you so much for joining us for this quick little Facebook Live and joining us virtually here doing these so if you have any topics you'd like for us to cover in future videos please leave those down in the comments also if you have any additional questions if you're watching the playback please leave those down in the comments as well and Morgan our social media manager will be answering those as they come thank you so much and see you next time thank you for supporting our animals